Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be showcasing you how we can work with Amazon S3 tables, how we can optimize our query performance using this S3 tables. That will be like cost your data scale, data lake scales basically. So in this S3 tables, it stores the tabular data at a scale in S3. So I'll be showcasing you with the help of Athena, and uh, how to create a S3 uh, bucket table. So I will go through this in the console, but before we start, I will just quickly show you uh, a quick introduction about S3 tables, why it is being used, and it claims like deliver the first cloud object store with built-in Apache Iceberg. What is Apache Ice Work so support? So all those things, examples I will be showcasing you, along with like uh, how we can streamline storing a tabular data at a scale in S3 tables. So I'll just switch to the console. But before that, let me showcase you some uh, benefits of using this S3 table and how does it works. So you can see a quick overview of this S3 tables. So as I mentioned, it is a store with built-in Apache Iceberg support and streamlined storing tabular data at a scale. So we have table optimization automatically happening for the scans and rewrite the table data. So it is saying that we have 3x faster query performance and it will keep on improving over the time. So we have additional S3 this tables that includes support for, as I mentioned, Apache Iceberg. Then we have tabular data that can be queried with popular AWS as well as the third party query engines. So in today's example, I will be showcasing you with Athena, but you can use Glue. And along with, you can use it with the EML and also various AWS services you can use it as well as with the third party query engines. So we can use this S3 to store tabular data such as daily purchase transactions, like some invoicing and all. So we can have uh, add impressions as an iceberg table in S3. We can optimize the performance as well as uh, cost as your data evolves using some automatic table maintenance. So all those things we can do it. So there are various benefits over it. We have uh, scalability, enhanced performance, fully managed, so taken care by the AWS, seamless integration, simplified security. So this is how it works. It is mentioned over here. It is storing the structured data in Amazon, Amazon Apache Parquet format. So with the table bucket, we create table as a first class resource directly in the S3. So these tables uh, can be secured with table level permissions, define either identity or resource-based policies we can define. So we have support for the Apache aspect standard. So whenever we uh, create a table in our table bucket, so the underlying data in S3 is stored in Parquet data. So then S3 maintains the metadata necessary to make the that particular parquet data queryable by our applications. So these are the things. It includes the query engines. Uh, we have the S3 APIs also for the table operations. So the, I will provide the link in my video description for the APIs if somebody wants to utilize those APIs in order to uh, query those S3 tables. So we can utilize that. And we can also automatically optimize this underlying parquet data by rewriting or compacting our objects. So it will ultimately help you to improve the query performance as well as the minimizing the cost. So all these things are included in this. So various customers are utilizing this S3 tables. It was previously available in few regions. Recently, some more regions are being added to it. So let me go to the console and let's start creating a table, create a table bucket. And then we can uh, work with Athena in order to query those tables. Okay, so you can see over here, this is S3. We have over here a table bucket. So currently I don't have anything over here. So I will just click on this create. Interesting part, like uh, this bucket names, like uh, 3 to 63 characters and unique within the account of this region. So we need not to have like table buckets globally unique and all. So that scenario is not there. So it is unique within the account for this AWS region. So I'll just write it over here, my S3 table bucket demo. 
And most important thing that we need to take care of is by default enabled over here. So if you don't enable the integration, so you cannot uh, integrate with various AWS analytics services and all. Then we will move on to the so create table bucket. Don't make any changes over here. So once it is created, it will take you back to the home page of this table buckets. Let's wait for a while. So you can see over here. So the most important thing that we need to remember over here, the ARN, I'm just simply copying this. So our table bucket is ready, S3 table bucket is ready. So what we are going to do now, we are going to work with Amazon Athena in order to query, we will create some uh, table, we will do some select, update and insert and delete. And we will see how this uh, Apache iceberg, the time travel, the data, how we can restore and all, all those things we will see in a demo. Now let's go to the, we will, Click on this. So you can see over here, query table with Athena, create table with Athena over here. So I'm just creating over here. So I'll just define my S3 namespace. So we will create a namespace first and then click create. Then we click over here, create table. So it will basically open the Athena wizard for us. So this is the uh, default one that is being here. So we can utilize this. No issues with this. So this is the default one. So if you want to create something your own, you can create your own. So here under the query results, so you can see there is no query results over here. So we have to change some, modify some settings over here. Let me close this one. So let's check over here some settings over here. So you can see over here, this is the query is the location. Actually, I have used Athena before in order to save the query data over here. So it's picking up that one. So I'll just click on the manage. You can choose your bucket, whichever you want. And uh, we have to, so that's all over here. We need not to mention anything over here. Assign bucket on a full control of the query results and click save button. Then we will go back to the query editor over here. And then we will, so you can see this is that's in my namespace over here. So you can see currently zero tables are there. So once I run this query, so you can see now one table is being shown over here. So daily sales, that is the table that is being created over here. And this uh, daily sales is the table name that is being created. Now, next thing that we have to do, so it's already inserted certain values over here. So there is an insert query also there along with the table. So let's do one thing. We can over here, we can just click on this, add a new tab for query. So we can just choose it over here. Select star from daily sales, run it. So we can see our data over here. So there is nothing over there. I think it's commented. So let's go back over here. We can just insert this values into the daily sales. We can copy this one and we can just go back here in the query. We can run this query. So query has been loaded. So I'll just uh, keep it this one. You can add some more queries over here. Let's say over here, select from daily sales so run so we can see over here our data that has being saved into the table so now i will do one thing i will just perform an update over here um, let me update some table i'll just add one more query over here so update daily sales so let me check the output over here so product category is equal to, let's say we would change the product category for, for monitor, or we can update our low issues with that. So that sales underscore amount equal to, let's say 500, where product category equal to is monitor. So let's run this one. I hope it is correct. So it's been queued, it's running our query. So this has completed over here. Now let me go back to my select query. We will run this one. So you can see over here, 
we have got the value updated to 500. So now we will delete this record. Delete from sales, daily sales. You can see over here table, the namespace is coming where product category is equal to monitor. So it will delete that product once I execute this one. So I updated and then I deleted this record. So now here we will see the how this Apache iceberg helps us to basically we will be checking the capabilities like icebergs time travel capabilities. So there will be a snapshot ID that we will try to restore it. But in order to get the snapshot, uh, the snapshot ID, we have to execute it like this. So let me go back to my select. So let me run normally first. So in order to show you the records first, you can see uh, we'll be having only two records. So that you can see the monitor has been removed. So now I will just put it over here, two double quotes, dollar snapshots. So let's run this one. So you can see over here, it gives me the uh, commit ID when it was being overwrite. And uh, so currently we have only two records, monitor is being deleted. So you can see the committed at or the date and time and the snapshot ID. So whatever we do, append, ups, insert, delete and all, each of them is saved as a snapshot. This is what the Iceberg's time travel capabilities are there. So we can copy the snapshot and we can see uh, like what's the version, what was actually in this snapshot ID. So I'll just copy this one. So you remember that I have already uh, deleted that one. So we can copy this and we can just go to the query part. So we have to write select star from my table name. So we have to remove this for version. You can use this intelligence to auto complete as of here. We have to paste this one. So let's see what we get it over here when we run over here. So you can see over here, our monitor has came. So if you remember, I have updated this one to uh, 500 and it was being, so that is the initial one when it was being appended, inserted over there. Then the next we have override this one with 500, then we have deleted it. So we can have this all. So like, uh, we can again write it down over here, select star from daily sales, just the snapshots ID. So you can just check the time. So this is what I reached. I checked the version. Similarly, even you can see that the parent ID is also there. So if you put this one and see what it's going to return. So for this version, I just put the version number over here. Nothing else to be changed. So you can see in this version, we have 500. Now the next one, if I run, it will be removing this uh, monitor record. So this is how we can utilize this S3 bucket tables. So we have seen how we can create a table, how we create a namespace, perform data definition. We created a table, we inserted some records, uh, we updated, we deleted, and we also saw how we can use a snapshot ID in order to uh, restore the data if you want. And in order to understand this Iceberg's time travel feature for your schema evolution. So we can see all override, append and all those things. So we can also try working with S3 tables and uh, glue, EMR and all. So try to explore yourself. I will provide the description in the description of this video, I'll be providing you the links for that. So do give a try to this and explore how does this AWS S3 this uh, tables works. And you can take a use case of this Athena and you can check the built-in that Apache Iceberg feature that is being there and check the time travel capabilities of this feature. So I hope you like the video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.